Hey, welcome back to the Rock Fantasy Files. I haven't done a video in forever. I've been just shooting concert footage and doing whatever to keep the channel a little bit alive, but uh, I've been busy back to work booking shows at a place in Middletown or running the record shop. So tonight I've asked all my guests to come on and talk about their favorite releases from the year 2022, whether it's five, whether it's 10, whether it's 30 like me. And I'm going to cheat because I'm going to kick things off. But in the room tonight, we got Ovi, who's staying up all night from Norway. We got Miles Bergeron from the South. We got Tony Dio, North Carolina, kind of from the South, too. We got Hansi in the center. He's our center square tonight, and he is uh, from Filth Hounds, correct? Yes, Filth and Hound. Filth Hound. And we've got yeah, Mr. Sasquatch, Denny Barth from Aggression in the room. We got Christian. Malion Ron, no, I cannot pronounce it correctly. <laughs> Mayorino. 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 He, he's from he's local. <laughs> he's from Connecticut. We got Mr. John McAfee, who needs no introduction, but he is the man from Incantation and kept us very entertained through the pandemic years and when we were just sitting here with nothing to do but Wednesday nights. And I appreciate John for hopping back in. But good to see him. And we got Ed Farsley from Armageddon Productions down in the right corner. So uh, I guess I can, I'm going to kick things off tonight. I'm going to try to go by it pretty quick, but uh, I do have props. Coming in at number 30 this year <laughs> is Abbott with Dread Reaver. Usually Abbott albums are in my top 10. This one is not. There's just something about it that doesn't exactly grab me, but I did put it in the top 3-0. Coming in next on the list would be Venom Inc. It's only black, of course. Tony and Mantis and everyone from Venom Inc., good friends of the, of the channel, and uh, popped them in at number 29. Going by quick, we've got Bloodbath with Survival of the Sickest at number 28. Make sure I don't lose count. And from Poland, a band that's had a hell of a shitstorm the last few years back with cancer culture decapitated. And that is coming in at, where was I at? 27. 26. 26. We're with so. Satan. I don't know. Satan with Earth, Earth Infernal. Another great record from Satan and the guys. And now I've got Black Anvil with Regenesis. I got to see them on tour this year with Dark Funeral and Immolation and Cannibal Corpse. It was great. These guys are local New York City, NYC, Black Metal. Wanted to give a shout out to them. Like the album a lot. Some power metal from Sweden with Hammerfall, Hammer of the Dawn. And I've got my number here. We are up to number. I'm trying to be like Casey Kasem, but I really suck at it. Got <laughs> from Kingston, New York, very local to us, a uh, geezer with Stone Blues Machine. They're a stoner metal band. They played a, uh, one of our gigs earlier this year. We're hoping to get them back into Middletown, but, uh, Really good band if you're that style of stuff. And now we are up to, see, I'm going super fast. I've lost track. The studio album, from, this is the 15th studio album from Voivod. And I've got the wrong one. I've got Behemoth. <laughs> Never mind. But I, I really messed up. I'm at number 24. I'm ahead of myself. Behemoth with Opus Contra Natrum. That one got mixed up. I'm sorry. I'm all screwed up now. Ben next is Boy Bob. There's Boy Bob. There's Boy Bob. There we the go. Boy Bob that we're talking about. It. Somebody mixed up my record albums today. And number 20 should be the man that needs no introduction, the godfather of heavy metal. Ozzy Osbourne. A lot of people shit on this album. I like it. It's my years, not yours. But he's got some heavyweight special guests. He had Eric Clapton. He's got Jeff Beck. He's got Zach Weld. He's got Mr. Iomi. And it made my list. So. Then we're going in with Lamb of God. For 11th studio album from Richmond, Virginia's Lamb of God. Thought it was pretty good. Was a big fan years ago. And this album are the three brothers from Brazil, Crisian, with Mortem Solus. An album I think that would be way higher on my list if it didn't come out like two weeks ago. Because every day I listen to it more and more as Destroyer 666 yes. with Never Surrender. 
strong album, nothing. It should be way higher than this, but it isn't because I got it too late in the year. But then I've got Meshuggah with Immutable from Sweden. That is my number 16 album. I will be back at the very end. If you can stand watching me that long, I will be back with my top 15. Mm -hmm. So, bang. Hope I did justice. I got it mixed up. But, you know, that's killer for you. <laughs> As we go into the room next, Hansi let me know that he has to go to work soon or get up very yep. early to go to work. So we're yeah, going to yeah, put yeah. him in next. And we don't know how many records he's going to come out with. It could be 100, top 100. 759. Oh, wow. <laughs> we're going to be here a while. Get him here. Oh, okay. Make a call. Only 20. Only 20. Am I All ready? Right. I'm ready. Oh, I thought you were going to do your other 15 first. No, okay. I will do that at the very <laughs> end. Okay, so I got them in no particular order, uh, not like, you know, from number one to number 20 or anything like this. And some of this stuff is probably, you know, not known. Uh, anyway, so number 20, I have to start out with uh, my boys from Sodom, 40 Years at War. Even so, this is a compilation record or best of all of mm -hmm. these songs are re-recorded with Frank Blackfire on the guitar again. You know, and Frank Blackfire being back in the band, no, nothing need to be mentioned. Uh, this is heavy as hell. So a few new songs on this one as well. Um, number 19, so 20, the, the, and again, they're just like numbers. They don't mean anything. Number 19, Barbarian, Viper Face. Great, uh, you know, thrashing power metal band, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Super. And I do have all of these records as well. But I am was not prepared to actually have prompts <laughs> like Stephen does, oh, you wow. know. But I have them written down. So good. Number eighteen, believe it or not, uh, aggression from hell with hate. Man, love this record. And I, uh, since the day I heard the first song, man, I was blown away what these guys done. You know, no ass kissing to this guy because he can kiss my ass. Honestly, no, just kidding. he's my brother, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, number 17, Death Hammer, Electric Warfare, absolute old school, perverted, freaking Norwegian alcoholics. Great band. <laughs> anyway, number 16, Night, Voices of the Cronian Moon. Very, you know, like uh, if you like um, dissection, you know, you, you might like Night. Check them out. Just seen them live not too long ago. Great guys, too. Uh, number 15 comes in with Vicious Blade, Siege of Cruelty. Nice. Yes. Awesome band. Absolutely love them since the demo and big supporter of them. Want to play with them soon. Oh, great. Uh, 14, Municipal Waste, Electric Brain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love those guys, to You know, but this album just punches, man, from... It's not a bad song on this album. It just absolutely rips head. Love it. Number 13. Here we go, Steven. Satan, Earth Infernal. Yes. What a killer album. I've been always a huge Satan fan since back in the day. And even the new last two albums, absolutely amazing. Love them. Had to be in there. Number 12, Amorphous, Halo. Yes. N another great band. Another... Every album that seemed to me to get better and better, if that's even possible, you know, like they just getting the songwriting is just absolutely amazing, you know. Number 11, band from Germany called Tox Pack 20,000 Volt, old school punk meets metal, meets oi, but in your face, rock and roll, drinking party. Great band, good friends of mine. Singer is going to be on my new album. Um, Number 10, Saxon, Carpe Diem. Love it. Absolutely love Saxon. We're probably one of my top five fans of all time. Uh, not a bad album, really. Ever. Well, let's not say that. But anyway, this album rules. Absolutely love it. Number nine, here we go again. Destroyer 666, Never Surrender. I love this. I have it on vinyl and on CD with the box set, with the necklace and everything. This album is their best by far. I mean, wow. I ab absolutely love it. Uh, number eight. Here we go, guys. Buckle up. Megadeth, the sick, the dying, and the dead. dead. 
even so everybody gives dave a bunch of shit about old man shouldn't play thrash metal let me tell you something this album absolutely fucking rules yeah i have that record as well man i love it absolutely love it and you know so much better than some of the other newer albums that came out with you know and then everybody's giving dave shit about it i love it great album number seven have to do it creator hate über alles uh what, fantastic album even so spazy is not in the band anymore um this absolutely rules i i, I love it it's creator as it's as best honestly number six tankard pavlo's dogs you know you can't hate tankard and this new album is just fun as hell man absolutely love it you know gary rules uh Number five, Destruction, Diabolical. Love this record. Absolutely love it. And, you know, Schmier won't believe it when I say it, but yes, it's it's one of my favorite Destruction records. I absolutely love it. The, the album just absolutely kicks you in the ass. Eh? Number four, Midnight, Let There Be Witchery. Midnight never sucks. So, but this record is absolutely amazing on this year. One of my favorites. Number three, if you haven't heard this band, run out and buy this record now. Band from Gelsenkirchen, Germany called Sphinx. The album is called Deathstroke. If you like old creator, endless pain type stuff, Sodom in the sign of evil, you need to do yourself a favor and buy this record. These guys are good friends. They're amazing. And this record just absolutely fucking rules. Uh, I can cuss, right? Is that, a, is that allowed? Yeah, you can swear. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Number two, <laughs> Voivod, Synchro Anarchy. Yeah. Another great Voivod album, if not one of probably my favorite out of the last three or four, to be quite honest. Absolutely amazing. Love it. Number one, Rammstein mit Zeit. I know Rammstein is not everybody's cookie. I love that band. I think Rammstein has always rubbed people the wrong way, and I love it. And this new album just absolutely rules. That was my 20, but I have to throw one in. Okay. I know this, I know this is not from... It was almost 2022, but this is one of my top 10 al albums in the last decade. It's Disaster, Churches Without Saints. Boom. That's how, all I had. I, you know... I will watch the rest of you guys and see what your lists and everything. Listen to Phil Hound. Yes, we will. Thank you for your time tonight, Hansi. Absolutely. Thanks, guys, for having me. I appreciate it. So who wants to go next? Do we have anybody raise their hand? Or everybody wants to go last, like Denny. <laughs> How about we get our most famous member out of the way, John McEntee? Um, Are yeah, you ready? I was ready. I was just organizing my. All right, so here. we'll let I someone else. We'll, go, we'll let Ovi go next since he's staying up the latest. How's that? Okay, I'll, I can go next after that. Then one. we'll put you on next. All right, cool. All right, all right. Well, I did ten as I was told. As you were told, <laughs> do as you're told. Yeah, <laughs> and this is kind of funny because I also start with Abbott. Okay, just like you did, Steve. I did, but mine was further down the list. Unfortunately, I hope he's not watching. He'll never want me to meet him backstage again or get a photo. <laughs> I mean, like, I love this album. It's got the good old black metal sound. It's mm -hmm. made to sound like it should sound and not like polished, but like black mm -hmm. metal. That's number 10. I'm sorry, um, you were I... saying Abbott sounded more black metal than it did polished? No, so it's it, I never, it, I sounds more, it. it sounds more black metal like it's supposed to than the polished black metal that other people are giving out. Okay. I like the old sound. Well, I'm I'm Norwegian, so it's kind of in my blood. Uh, number nine, I'll I have Dark Tone with Astral Fortress. Okay. I, almost, really I kind good. of forgot about that album. I got it sitting around here and I didn't put the pile. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's so good. It's like yeah. it's like really good 80s. It's yeah, it's really good. 
And number eight, I got someone that John knows pretty well, probably. Belfagor with Devils. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, with Hel good friends. Helmut. Helmut. Yeah, he, he is awesome. And, oh, shoot. It's one of your most religious records you've showed so far. Yeah. Very religious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else you got, Obi? Yeah. Holy cow. I got a chick here. He's lost. I, right? Someone stole his yeah. records. <laughs> yes, I can't. I can't. I can't count to 10. Oh, okay. Well, 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 well. Um, <laughs> it's okay. He's just the opposite of Hansi. Let's, let's, Instead of he doesn't have him numbered, he's like me, just pulling records out. Like, what was that? Just throw in. I will throw in the creator with Hey to Baralis. Okay. At number seven, and number six, destruction with diabolical. Okay. A top five. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go on the wild side. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah. I want to start with with birthday massacre. I've talked about them a few times. I got okay. it all signed, signed by everybody. That's a new one on me. Yeah. And now I'm gonna go even further away. This is gonna be totally on the wild side. Uh -oh. This is this is Yota. It's synthwave from Sweden, but she lives in in France. Okay. And I love synthwave. It's just, it's good for the head. Okay. <laughs> to listen to. And number three, mm -hmm. I'll go, I mentioned them before, Infected Rain. Okay. Yeah. You always wear the hat. Good. Yeah. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Now number two uh -oh. is also Swedish. Avatarium with death. Where is your sting? Okay. You got to check it out. It's really good. The new Avatarium album. Have you ever listened to the previous ones? I have not. Oh, it's, I, it's uh, Leif I, Edling's uh, project. He started back okay. in uh, 2014 or something. Okay. So it's, it's really good. All right. And my number one. Steve knows this. Steve knows this very well. Da, 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 except it's a different album. Meg Megadeth is number one for Obi. Yep. Yep. Made uh, made Hansi's list. It's on my list too, but I didn't do that half it's yet. It's so good. It's so good. It's like mm -hmm. bring out the dead. It's like it starts with like uh, Monty mm -hmm. Python. It's it's like and also like Mission to Mars is like really fun mm -hmm. track and mm -hmm. it's we got so many different songs in it, it and it's got picked up the pace and it's like got Steve Diarji on bass and yeah it's it packs a punch We'll Be Back is one of my favorite tracks from that record actually yeah it's really good okay Obi uh, we'll sneak back and wrap up with you in a little bit we're going to move over to Mr. John McAtee. Maybe we'll try to do this in order going forward from here. We'll do John. We'll go over to Tony Dio. We're going to go to Ed. We're going to go to Miles. We're going to go to Christian. Sasquatch is going last. He requested it. So Ralph and Sasquatch. Cool. Ralph, well, uh, welcome. I'm sorry we woke you up. Uh, I guess you thought it was nine, but we started a little early. But... Hey, Ralph. Great to see you. Drink Ralph. that coffee, my friend. If six was nine. It, All it's right, blood. So. It's blood. It's not coffee. It's blood. Uh, <laughs> yeah, count, count <laughs> Ralph. Is, oh, so everyone, before we get started, Count Ralph is going to be having a birthday coming up. He is going to be a part of our birthday. Uh, there's a couple birthday parties coming at the Quinn's Bins where I book in Middletown. But we've got four bands lined up today, Ralph, and you're going to love every one of my hopes. So. That's February 11th in Middletown, New York. If anybody's around in the area wants to come out, Count Ralph's birthday. It's Jotunheim from New York City. Uh, black metal band, melodic black metal, along with Slayers, Tribute, Show No Mercy, Reaper, 
And actually, there's one band we didn't quite confirm yet, so I won't, that'll be a surprise. So we got those three bands and maybe one or two others, and that's Count Ralphins' birthday. Awesome. And now, John, you can go oh. since I'm running my mouth and rambling on as usual. Oh, good. Um, yeah, first of all, it's great to be back here. It's been a while, and I've been wanting to you know, do the Rock Fantasy file stuff. It's just been tough to fit it in with my schedule and everything. I, I think it's been crazy. And also, another thing is doing this, um, you know, my favorite albums of 2022. For me, 2022 is like a big blur of stuff just because I've been so busy you know, on the road and just being like in band mode and stuff that I, mm. it was a lot different than in the pandemic when I had a lot of time to listen to stuff and really sure. pay attention. There's like so many albums. I mean, it's the amount of albums that came out this year just seems ridiculous. And it's like, I keep finding new albums that are really killer that came out. It's almost like uh, mm -hmm. pandemic really gave a lot of people some good inspiration and stuff. So it's just been, um, it's been, it was really tough to actually, come up with a, a list of stuff um you know when i wasn't kind of in my normal well not my normal but my abnormal chill out mode of the, the lockdown and stuff but mm -hmm. this, is, this is what i came up with i can't i get i didn't really um i didn't go with 10 i went with 12 but i just That's fine i just went with i just went with some stuff that just you know i checked out you know i was down with for a while and thought was that was cool so uh the first one i was really impressed with that uh was probably probably one of their better albums i think is exhumed to the dead i think it ends up it came out really good and there's mm -hmm. something about it just has a good um eh, i don't know I, I guess it's a good old school vibe to it you know it just it sound it sounds the way that i prefer exhumed the sound um and unfortunately, I didn't get to check them out when they played live, but I definitely uh, want to check them out and hear some of those songs live. Uh, next one I have, and this isn't an order either, because it's just 12, 12 albums that I like a lot from this year. Um, another one I think it was really good, I was really impressed with, was Castrator, uh, that's filed in Oblivion. I was really surprised on how good it was. I, you know, I didn't really know much about the band. I, obviously, I know, I know most of the people in the band but i'd never heard the band before and, and once i heard the album it really sounds badass and really happy to see robin kicking ass and now another band what is it like her third or fourth band that she's kicking yeah. ass in you know yeah it's really cool and um yeah they're they're all good people it's a great album um definitely worth checking out if you're into like the more um it's kind of a i, would, I go it's brutal death metal would probably be the way maybe like a a 90 style brutal death metal, but not quite as generic as a lot mm -hmm. of the other uh, ones. Anyway, going on next, uh, Druid Lord. I really like the Relics of the Dead album that came out earlier this year. Just um, killer, raunchy, old school death metal. I mean, these, I know, I've known these guys for quite a while. Um, they're from, from the old Florida scene and stuff. And it was just great to hear such a raunchy album from and just you know definitely one of my favorites of the year um next on my list is um the bloodbath survival of the sickest i mm -hmm. have a hard time not liking um what's his name um um uh, i can't think of his name now the singer um uh -huh. nick holmes yeah nick holmes it's really difficult for me not to like nick holmes death metal vocals because i've been robbed a bit for so many years when he was singing on over all those paradise lost albums hear him you know every time i hear him do his awesome death metal vocals it's just a you know dream come true he's really one of my favorites of all time um the next one um i have on the list is uh belfagor the devils it's yes another yeah. killer album and um i just you know they're just, they're just a great band and just you know we even played some shows on this year just really fun guys to hang out with it's, it's another killer album and it's great to see a band like belfogel war it's just been chugging at it for years still putting out top-notch stuff and um yeah it's, it's a really great album um what was it um next one uh, you probably don't know about but it's aggression from hell with hate uh 
Never Luckily, heard of uh, Sasquatch sent me uh, earlier this year, so I was able to check that out. And um, it's just killer. I mean, anybody that knows me before I knew anybody in aggression, I've been a big fan of them since the 80s. Um, back when I heard the full treatment, it just um, blew my mind as a kid. And for me, uh, I'll say it again, I say it a million times, but in my opinion, Thrash should have went in the way of aggression and not the way of a lot of the commercial thrash bands that you know play the super nice super tight stuff i mean nothing's wrong with being tight and you know well played but there's also something about going with you know true feeling in, in the thrash metal you know having it not be just about the talent show but having about the feeling in the music because to me it's more important to have feeling than it is to have um be technically proficient properly i'm not saying it isn't but i'm just saying it went into a route where everything started getting really sterile and i mm -hmm. like and but going to this it's just great you know it's great to hear um you know sasquatch on vocals kicking ass and um yeah, I'm just really looking forward to checking them out live soon. It'll mm -hmm. be awesome. And um, yeah, I mean, I for me, it's just, um, it's a mandatory on the list for sure. Um, next up, um, I have to go with Goat Whore, a band we toured with earlier this year. I forgot how much I like Goat Whore, but after touring mm -hmm. with them, it's like I realized, holy fuck, this band is just fucking awesome they really yeah. are I, I, I mean every time i've seen it they've been great but it's been quite a while since i've actually paid attention to their new albums and stuff i just just one of those bands just kind of got you know i don't know just um i don't know sometimes there's so much stuff coming out you just don't pay attention to it and um mm -hmm. but this album when it came out it came out right you know close to the end of our tour so i was kind of really pumped on them still and it just it's a great album i just love that black metal celtic frost type vibe and mm -hmm. i can't say enough of how awesome they are live and to be able to tour with them it was just so besides being cool, they're super cool guys it's just <laughs> great to play with such a strong killer band it makes you want to play better as a musician and, and kick more ass mm -hmm. to be around other people that are just so awesome um and and ben falgus is like the coolest guy ever um i really got i really connected with uh him i've known him for quite a while but on this tour really connected and um yeah i just had to give a little shout out to him um my next on the list is another mandatory um it's autopsy morbidity triumphant i mean it just i mean come on it's autopsy um it's one of what for me it's one of the best death metal bands in history and um the fact that they're still putting out albums that could have been put out in, you know, 89, 90 and fit perfectly in. And it's, you know, 2022 is, you know, I'm always going to go for that, you know? So, and um, yeah, just, just great. Uh, a little side note, uh, just to toot my own horn is when we played in, um, it was on the tour we do at Nile. We had Chris Reifer come up and play drums for us on our cover of Evil Dead by Death since he played on an album. And I'll tell you, that was like a dream come true for me to get to be able to play such a classic song with the guy that played on the album. And uh, of course, being a good friend also, it was, it was just amazing. So I had to toss that in there because that, that was just badass. Mm -hmm. um, next on my list was um, Dark Funeral, We Are the Apocalypse. Yes. You know, I was really surprised on this album. Um, no disrespect to them, but I wasn't really super a fan of their last couple albums. Not that I hated it or nothing, but it never stood out as something special. But this album, really, the production is really great. It just somehow brings out the, the it's like the black metal vibe, but it's just something strong, something special about it this time that I didn't notice on some of the other ones. Um, so yeah i was really happy this was this is one that was kind of i'm not saying i wasn't looking forward to but i just i just happened to fumble uh, across it and i was like holy crap this sounds really really good and i it seems vocal, like they almost like rejuvenated so what's that the adult vocalist is so good yeah he's oh. a great yeah he's great great dude and a great vocalist and um yeah there's just it's almost like there's just something on this album it just seems like they have um they're an inspiration again or something like mm -hmm. that. 
I agree, hundred um, percent. Yeah, uh, another album was um, the new Watain album, the, the Agony and Ecstasy of Watain. Another great album. Watain's one of those bands that I early on I never really connected with. It's not that I even didn't like him or not like him. I just never really paid that much attention to him. And then when we did that tour with um with um Morbid Angel a couple of years back, and I really got a massive appreciation for them because mm -hmm. they really are one of the greats of black metal and they have oh, yeah. a, a sound. It's like when you listen to them, it sounds familiar but also sounds like themselves at the same time mm -hmm. and it's just a good you know they're just a good, great band to headbang to um, for sure and then um the final one i have on my list here is uh immolation Oof. act of god it's a great album i mean the yeah yeah i mean it's pr pretty on, on a lot of people's lists i know it's a great it's a great album i mean the last one was great too. It's like I don't even know which I don't know which one I like more, this one or the last one, but they're both really great mm -hmm. albums. To me they're but they're probably they're probably about equal and it just always blows my mind the um mm. the stuff they've come up with over the years. I mean, they really they're one of the few bands that I think they progressed a lot over the years, but they just um there's they progressed in a good way and almost become more original mm -hmm. with time or something like that you know their own yep. distinctive thing that was good and um yeah and then another one i, I wanted to bring up too uh, i can't remember the name of it. i forgot to put it on the list i just thought about it now it was a new christian album yes thought was really good it it probably is my favorite christian album too in quite some time it just seems like it's it just has I don't know. I like the sound of it. I just like the aggression. Just when I listen to it, I guess it feels like a comfy Christian blanket, you know? There you go. <laughs> it's just like, hey. it's a, what, what I want to hear by Christian. So it's really, it's really killer. So that's and, my and, top 12. And if the brothers are watching the show, please send John some type of a souvenir blanket so he can get cozy <laughs> later <laughs> on those cold North Carolina nights. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's a great list, and uh, I agree I mean, with yeah, it all. Yeah, it's most, I mean, most of the stuff is mostly death metal, a little bit of mm -hmm. black metal. It's not, I haven't had a chance to listen to that much um, heavy metal mm -hmm. and thrash and rock stuff this year. So I don't, there's probably good stuff that I didn't get a chance to check out. So I'll probably check out some of the stuff on your guys' list. And speaking too, you know? of uh, immolation, Alex Bouks wanted to join us tonight, but he mm -hmm. couldn't. So he did give me a list to read off and some will agree with some but Danny's got a bone to pick about one of them so I, they will talk when they see each other again <laughs> so coming in at number 10 is Sandra San Sanhedrin with lights on nice. number nine is blood incantation time with time wave zero I'm not sure if these are in a particular order but he does have them numbered number eight dark funeral we are the apocalypse uh number seven is imperial triumphant spirit of ecstasy Number six is Autopsy, the Morbidity Triumphant. Number five is the Brian Jonestown Massacre, Fire Doesn't Grow on Trees. Number four is the Scorpions with Rock Believer. Number three is Kirk Hammer with Portals. Number two is The Cult with Under the Midnight Sun. And number one is Black Anvil with Regenesis. And, uh, he wrote, I was asked to do my top records of 2022 on a podcast. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it. I'll throw out my updated list out there for those who care. I'm still big on new music, and there's a lot of great new music out there. So that's from Alex Bokes and uh, The Mighty Immolation, of course, which probably on a couple of our lists, I would say. Where are we going to head to next? Did I already pick it out? I don't even remember already. <laughs> yes, I'm going. Tony Dio is going to go next. He's going to change it up a little bit, probably. Oh yeah, you know, I'm going to bring I, us out of the death and the more heavy metal. Yeah, more heavy metal that. stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's so much stuff came out this year, and there's stuff that That's I've crazy. heard you guys mentioned, and I was like, like you just said, uh, there was a new cult record. I never, even, I never knew there was a new cult. <laughs> I didn't pay attention. Uh, it happens. Yeah, it does. Crazy. Even with the record and it's store. Just, I mean, you know, so many people were, were writing and recording during the pandemic. So, so much music coming out. Everybody's putting albums out over the yeah. last, you know, 
year and a half. Um, a couple of that I wanted to mention that I actually don't have physical copies of uh, that is in my top 10 uh, is a band from, I guess they're from California to call Entranced. Mm-hmm. And it's got some members from White Wizard and Holy Grail, Witherfall in this band. I know they toured, uh, they came, I think they, they came to Charlotte and they came to Richmond and I missed them. They came with, uh, with Haunt and Seven Sisters, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, earlier this year. But they've got an EP out just in trance. And it's great. I really like it. It take it takes from the name in trance. You think of scorpions in yep. trance, and it's very scorpions like. It has some okay. stuff on there. Some of the stuff kind of reminds me of like Yuli Roth era stuff. Some of it even sounds like something maybe off Blackout. Um, from there, uh, another one that I haven't picked up a physical copy of, but I'm really digging it. It's only been out a few months now. Is Sweet Evil Sun by Candlemass. Uh, really good Candlemass album. Of course, they got the original singer back. And who sang on Epicus Dumascus, uh, Metallicus. Uh, and it's a really, really good album. And I, I saw them earlier this year at uh, Hell's Heroes in uh, Texas. And uh, they still, I mean, it's classic sounding candle mass. It's a really good the record. Gu- the, gu- the guitar player in Avatarium is the producer of that album. Also, mm-hmm. the vocalist from Avatarium is, uh, has a vocal, like a backing vocal on one of the songs on the album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good solid record. Um, I didn't even know about that. From uh, from I'm there, I'm going to go with this band called Riot Act. This is uh, Rick Ventura, who was the guitar player in Riot during like Fire Down Under. Okay. Uh, and, you know, uh, the classic records, you know. Um, and he was the second guitarist with Mark Reale, of course. And he's formed this band, Riot, Riot Act. And it's got that classic riot sound like stuff from fire down under and in uh narita and so forth uh it's it's got that classic just hard rock riot sound and i saw them on tour with raven earlier this year okay really, yeah just a great tour package and it was cool to see and hear some classic riot the uh the singer even kind of reminds me a lot of guys Speranza vocally um from there, I'm going with a Frontiers All-Star Project band that I had talked about when we did the earlier uh, mid-year uh, picks. Yeah, yeah. Clean, clean Break. And this is one of these all-star bands. And speaking of Riot, the guitar player on this is Mike Flitz, who is in the current version of Riot, or Riot 5, who's been with Riot since uh, like 1988. And uh, he's got, the rhythm section over here is uh, my buddy Perry Richardson, who used to be in Firehouse. He's now in Striper. The drummer is uh, Robert Sweet from Striper. And the lead singer is James Durbin, who was a, an American Idol contestant. He was wow. the guy, was the metal singer who actually performed live on American Idol with uh, Judas Priest once. Um, from there, I'm going to go oh, to a wow. record that actually... This record came out last year, but I, it's got to make my top 10 because I didn't get it until January or February okay. of this year. And it's, uh, I think uh, Steve will agree. Uh, oh. power, um, uh, the, dude, I, I, to- I totally wanted to cheat with that. And I'm like, it wasn't this year, but I just discovered them this year because they played our yeah. venue in town. Well, it was late. It was late last year when it came out. Shot the System is the name they're of the amazing. album. They're amazing. Great hard rock band from New York, uh, female vocals. Um, just hard driving, you know, uh, straight up heavy metal. Um, I'd say it's metal. Yeah. I'd say yeah, it's very, very it's, much, uh, early eighties. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. If you like stuff like, uh, like early Lee Aaron and, um, and, uh, Warlock and stuff like that. You'll dig it. I was really listening good. to that album here, you know, when we booked them, because I'm like, is this the same, you know, somebody else booked them. I'm, this is mm-hmm. the same band. And mm-hmm. they're like, and I was listening to him. my wife was laying down. She goes, wow, are you listening to Old Warlock? I'm like, no, I'm listening to the Tower. The one song really sounded like early Warlock, like Burning mm-hmm. the Witches. Burning know, Witches, era. for sure, for sure. From there, yep. we're going to go with uh, Those Who Hunt at Night by Savage Master. That's Love nice. these guys. Classic, old school, <laughs> like that metal one blade. I, that one I need to hear, man. I, somehow yeah, I didn't hear that this year. That, just just good classic <laughs> heavy metal, like something you hear on Metal Massacre in back yeah. in the day, you know. Um, from there, we're going to go with Thrash with uh, Municipal Waste, uh, Electrified Brain. 
Uh, love these guys, good friends of mine. Uh, always deliver solid thrash album, crossover thrash, as some people would call it. Uh, and they even did this on this is a CD in the long box. They did the <laughs> long box, they brought it back. So uh, that was kind of cool. I was like, I got to get that. It's a nice collector's piece. Um, from there, I'm going to go with a band from California that I discovered this year Early Moods. Wow. These guys are great. Young guys from California playing classic doom. So it's, and of course, you got your Sabbath influence there. The singer's got a little Ozzy going on. Cool. But to me, they sound more like Metal Blade era trouble, like pre Rick Rubin trouble. So it sounds okay. like something off the first couple of trouble albums. It's just really doomy. It's got that, those hooks and the, the guitar leads. And uh, it's a, one of my favorite records from this year. It's just a solid record. And uh, my number one album is definitely going to be the new Skid Row record. Wow. I love it. I think it's great. I've been a Skid Row fan for years. They're one of those bands that get looped in with the hair band things, but they were just a really good hard rock band. Mm -hmm. And um, this album, they had the new singer, uh, Eric Growall, who I was a fan of from his band Heat from Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, this album could be the album that, that actually would follow Slave to the Grind because it's in that vein. And uh, they, they definitely recaptured that sound with this record. Is so, Scotty, uh, Scotty Hill still in the band? It's, it's still Scotty yeah. and Snake and Rachel Bolin. They've got a different drummer. And, of course, uh, Eric's on vocals. And he's the closest thing they're going to get vocal-wise to Sebastian for sure. Uh, just a very strong singer and a great front man. That I saw him at M3 earlier this year, mm -hmm. and they stole the show. They were the best band on the whole bill. Um, and just 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 a shout out for honorable mentions. I I really dig the new the, the latest Satan record was really good. The yeah. latest Midnight album was great. And uh, the Saxon, I've actually listened to the Saxon more in the last couple of weeks, and I've, I've I've had it for a while and just haven't really you know, mm -hmm. had a chance to, to really listen to it. And it is a, a solid record from Saxon. So uh, that's going to be my top 10 pick. Um, I will mention, uh, you know, we talked about reissues uh, before in our mid-year one. Um, we're talking about, you know, death metal and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I got the Dance Macabre box set from Celtic Frost. My girl got it for me for Christmas, nice. the vinyl box. And that is so nice. It, I, it's if nice. You have, if you need it, go get it. It's just, it's great because... A lot of my original vinyl copies are all just worn out. I've had them since, you know, the late 80s. And, they're, you know, it was good to get. And it's a really, really nice set. So I highly recommend that. Excellent. Yeah, I've been awesome. hearing people picking that up. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for your time tonight. And it's good to have the crew back on. It's been forever. Like, like John was saying, cool. I'm not even in a band. I just run a store. And it was not as easy just to have Wednesday night and Monday night when I do Pete Pardo's show come around. You're like, man, I don't have no time to do this or prepare for it. So we're going to try to get really some fun. episodes going in the next few weeks. So while we are all back around before we all stick, it's too busy. And uh, so who wants to go next? Uh, did I already pick it? Does Ed want to go next? Yes. All right. We'll go Ed. We'll go Miles. We'll go Christian. We'll go Ralph. I'm going to get my top 15. And then Sasquatch is going to close us out, bro. All right. Uh, definitely, as most of the guys have been saying, this has been a really great year for new metal. A um, lot of great records. A lot of old bands came out with some really strong records. Um, I compiled here my top eight. Um, I got on the, the bandwagon a little late for this show, so I didn't compile that many lists, uh, but I got a top eight here. <laughs> uh, and I really primarily um, focused on the top three. Um Coming in at number eight, the new Amorphous album, Halo. Just brutal death metal. Always been a great band. Always been one of my favorite, like, avant-garde type of uh, death metal bands. Doing a lot of hey, different things. One second. There Amorphous, you know. you're saying, is death metal? Well, mm -hmm. yeah. They, okay. they, have, they certainly have their elements. <laughs> uh, they're all the stuff more, a little more brutal. But yeah. I, I love their oh, sound. Yeah. Um, I just, a, I, I just remember hearing them um, a couple years back. They sounded more like, I don't know way more commercial than it was um death metal maybe i'm wrong i mean i didn't listen to it so i can't say but i would say yeah, interested to hear you play great. death metal because i love yeah they, they certainly got a little off the death metal um sound for a while there yeah, oh, yeah. i didn't realize that i, I, I would and, say i'd say melodic death metal yeah like yeah, in flames death or something metal. yeah uh, yeah well you know there's really great tom yeah, tommy does really great vocals and he still does the, one of the best 
death growls in the business. Yeah. 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 As he goes back and forth. Okay, I, know, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, I, I, just, I was a surprised when you said death metal and amorphous. I thought that was that didn't go together anymore. That's all. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little bit more now. <laughs> wait till you wait till you see my top ten. We're gonna make fun of a lot of things. I'm, I'm afraid they didn't get out in front of the beard. All right. Uh, coming to number seven. Uh, Municipal Waste, Electrified Brain. Yeah. Uh, another great band. Oh, always sort of continuing the old classic DRI sound. Uh, mm-hmm. Bringing it to a different level. This album incorporating a little more song structure, a little more extended songs, longer songs, a little more arranging. Uh, but just straight brutal album. Uh, just constant speed. Uh, coming in number six, Creator. Uh, Hate Uber Alice. Uh, great record. Not as great as I think the one before that, the one or two before that, but still a great record. Um, Creator's always been a fantastic band. Uh, I think the last five, six albums have really brought them back to the forefront of thrash metal, just being a brutal band. Uh, always great album cover of artwork, so phenomenal. <laughs> always. Yes. Never, never fails. Uh, next one is Immolation, Acts of God. Just fantastic record. Immolation always, always deliver. Um, like John was saying, this record and the record before it are just absolutely brutally phenomenal. Um, to, I can't say enough good things about Immolation. Uh, from the first, the, from the first demo, they've always been an avant-garde death metal band, brutal as hell, created their own sound and have never really faulted from that. And this nope. record continues their legacy in finest style. Uh, next record, Razor, uh, Cycle of Contempt. I love it. Um, it's basic Razor style. I think it's the best record they've done since probably, shit, the last <laughs> 30, 35 years. Uh, um, basically, I think this is one of the best Bob Reed records. I mean, no, 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 nothing will touch the early uh, Sheepdog records, of course. Uh, but as far as Bob Reed's style, I think he's gone to a more Sheepdog's type style with more screaming and more less of his newer style. Um, this record is great. It's just from start to finish, just Dave's riffs are phenomenal. Uh, it's great to have a new Razor record out there in the first place. And I think it stands up to the last few records better than the stuff they had done. You know, the last like four or five records are mm-hmm. not so good, let's just say. Uh, but this is definitely a return to it. Uh, as far as the top three, uh, Voivod, Synchro Anarchy, my number three record, just absolutely fantastic record. Voivod, another band. This is their 15th record now. There you go. Um, just yeah. one of their best. I think this record, they have more song diversity and tempo changes on this particular record than any other single record. They've pretty much taken their entire Voivod career, all their sound, all their arranging, um, the Nothing Face album, the Outer Limits album, the newer style arranging, and incorporated on this album to just create one brutal masterpiece from start to finish. Uh, from the opening notes to the ending riffs, it's just a wild ride. Uh, spacey music, trippy music, brutal music. It's just, it's Voivod, top 10, no question about it. Uh, number two, best album of the year, Scorpions. I fucking love this album. I think this Scorpion wow. album um, is the best album they've done since Blackout. Um, from the moment wow. I... From the moment I first heard the song, uh, that was the first song they did. Uh, oh, Rock Believer. From the first single, I just fell in love with the album. Um, this album has such a 70s Scorpion feel to it. So there's these there's some Uli John Roth riffs in there. Um, any of these songs can be taken off, taken by force. Love Drive, wow. Blackout, Animal Magnetism. It just... It's a, it's a fantastic record. I just I can't stop listening to it from start to finish. The slower songs I think are just absolutely mm. beautiful masterpieces, um, and the faster songs are just as brutal as and as fast and aggressive as anything the Scorpions has ever done. Mm. And it's just an <laughs> absolute masterpiece. My wow. favorite album of the year, without question, Saxon. Carpenter okay. Just. Again, one of the best sax albums. This album stands up to anything Saxon has d- has done in their heyday. Um, just the song "The Pilgrimage" is like Crusader. It's just an epic, classic Saxon yep. song. Um, songs come in all totally aggressive, brutal Saxon, fast-paced, heavy riffing, guitar crunching songs. Then we got some melodic ballads, and it's just it's a wild ride. It's great. 
Um, heavy metal has come back so strong this past year. Just the old bands, the old guard, putting out albums as best, as, as great as anything they've done before. Scorpions and Saxons prove that without a shadow of a doubt. Cool. And there you have it. Well, thanks, Ed. And You're welcome. You and Sasquatch and me all do disagree on one record. We're going to have to do a in defense of the new Scorpions record, and let's tear it down in a couple of weeks. I think we'll get the fans, we'll get the haters out first. No, 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 I want to go. No, I want to go re-listen to it. I want to. I gotta listen to this again too because I didn't hear anything that Ed said on it. So I, I, that's I why we all got out. different. I didn't, you gotta, I didn't you gotta listen to it a couple of times. The more you listen to it, it's just it's absolutely. Right. Weird. I guess I couldn't get by roots in my boots. <laughs> I couldn't get by that one, but. <laughs> I, I found my number seven that I, I have forgotten on my list. So I'm just going to do a quick jump in and oh, you say my original, my original seven yeah, that I put in creator. It's <laughs> male violence. Who? Male violence with okay. malicious, malicious intent. It's okay. an English band. So you really forgot good that one. Okay. Yeah. Check that out. It's really good. All right. Male violence. Malicious intent. All righty. So thanks. Hope you have lost. Cool. So we're going to move on to down the swamp land where Goat Horror lives and Phil oh, from Pantera. Yeah. And this guy's known to throw down, drink, his, drink some beers, and go out and wrestle alligators. So <laughs> we got Miles back on the channel. And welcome back, Miles. Let's hear what you've been listening to last year. Yeah. So what everybody said. 2022 was a big year they had a lot of stuff come out some 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 stuff goes by the wayside but uh i did listen to a bunch of albums this year and um going back and compiling this list um it was kind of hard because a lot of good stuff came out this year mm -hmm. in my opinion some real good stuff i had only picked five initially but then i i went back and i added some more that um that i really did like so um, these are in no particular order whatsoever, okay. except, for my, except for my number one. My number one's my favorite album. Of so this. how many are you gonna give us completely? Um, I got uh eleven right now. Eleven school, yeah, yeah. rock it. So I got uh yeah. autopsy, uh morbidity, triumphant, like everybody said. Mm -hmm. Uh autopsy, they're one of the one of the staples in death metal throughout the years. They never disappoint. And this album is no different. Really good album. Um, Undeath, It's Time to Rise from the Grave, a real good album. I thought it was um, really, really strong, really aggressive. Blood Bad, Survival of the Sickest. I, I really did love this album. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the albums that I listened to the most this year, just going back, listening to it. Okay. Real good stuff. Exhumed to the Dead, love Exhumed. And this album just kicks ass as well. Um, an album that uh, a band probably none of y'all heard of, but uh, Immolation, Acts of God. Yeah, Never heard of it. Who's that? Yeah, everybody. <laughs> everybody. Said, that but it, it, it's, it's well deserved. It was, it's a damn good album. Really good. Yeah. Uh, next, I got Crowbar, New Orleans okay. Band. Zero. Yeah nice zero and below real good album you know every time every time i'm in a mood for crowbar they never disappoint and this album didn't disappoint me whatsoever got it the first day it came out and i was so excited when i heard it uh decapitated cancel uh cancer culture yeah really really dug this album i liked how it was melodic in parts and but with that melodic melodic tones and it never really gave up with being aggressive and i thought it was really good at with that um number three i'm not even counting but number three i got let there be witchery by midnight um i really just started really paying midnight a lot more attention because i hear a lot of y'all uh talk about them and when i heard when i heard them and this album i was like damn this is like a a badass version of Venom. They got like that old school kind of Venom totally. vibe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, but it, they, they make it their own and it, it really sounds like it sounds like their own, but it really is familiar with that Venom mm -hmm. sound that I really like. 
Mm-hmm. Great band. Um, number two, uh, the album that came out earlier this year, but I don't think I've stopped listening to it since it came out, and that's the new Wattain album. Yes. Um, the Agony and Ecstasy of Wattain. Um, when I first got this album, I listened to it, and I'm kind of close to saying that this is one of my probably my favorite Wattain album. Wow. It, it's getting there because I, I haven't stopped listening until the day I got it. And obviously, Steve had said it, but my number one is Gold Whore, Angels Hung from the Arches of Heaven. Yes. Um, Gold Whore has never disappointed me whatsoever. And this album was um, no different. You know, hearing, I, I didn't hear none of the singles because I wanted to hear the album when it first came out to hear it in its mm-hmm. entirety. And when you hear when you hear like a band that you really love is coming out with an album, you got these kind of, yeah, it's going to be badass. But what if it's not as good as the albums that I really love and stuff like that? But this album, like I said, go whore. They never disappoint. This album fucking slays. And I think it is my favorite album of 2022. Yeah, great cool. album. Go hard, never disappoints, man. And that's never uh, disappoint. as, as John can attest to seeing them live and being on the road with them. Yeah, they, they we had we had to up our game on that tour. You gotta you gotta bring out the A list, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. So uh as we move through the list, we're starting to wind down. We've got Mr. Christian from Connecticut, which I'm not fucking up his last name twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right and christian you have a you have a music vlog too don't you uh yeah so i have um i have a youtube channel uh its name is the sound archives i haven't posted a video in a few months i've just okay been... you're like me then <laughs> yeah I, I mean not busy i mean mm-hmm. you know I've, I, I the last video i posted was a concert review of the uh the bay strikes back towards his testament okay yeah um yeah. Yeah, Testament, Exodus, and and Death Angel. Yeah, that was a great. And I think show. that was back at like Very, the end of September. Cool. I've just been. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been good keeping up with posting anything on there. That happens. I'm here with you guys tonight, so it's thanks for coming. So let's hear your list. So, um, <clears throat> so I think I've got ten albums picked. I didn't rank all of them as far okay. as what's my, you know favorite. My top, I, I I do have a top three, um, but everything else is just kind of. Mm-hmm. you know it's no particular order as far as yep, what yep. favorite to least favorite so um first one i got on my list right here is the the new candle mass sweet evil sun um honestly i'm, I'm really kind of just discovering this band now but um <laughs> okay. that, so far i i love that record um i've only really listened to that newest one that came out when i was there for their debut the um yep. was it epicus epicus Doom 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 yeah i've really listened to you so far so um yeah i like what i hear so far so it's it's good um next one i got here is one that hasn't been mentioned tonight and that is uh the zealot gene from uh jethro tull wow um nice so i think it you know i think it sounds like you know what you would expect from from jethro tull i think it's uh i think it's solid um album i like the title track i like the the last track on there fisherman of ephesus um mm-hmm. opening one mrs tidbits is a good one um next up i got on my list right here uh hey Uber alice from creator um I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this as long as i've been a metalhead you know i've never really listened to creator much i saw them on the tour with merciful fate and um mm-hmm. and midnight opening and i, I yep. was like holy shit these guys are awesome mm-hmm. and it's not the first time i've seen them live either i saw them live a few years back i think they played with exodus and accept i, I forget i, I don't yeah, know what year. that was a been. tour yeah that was a tour yeah it was uh, i saw them at the i think it's the palladium in worcester and i love that i love them then too but mm-hmm. for whatever reason i just never started like listening to their albums um i got plenty but, of catching uh, yeah, up that, to do yeah i I know i got a lot (laughs) but uh yeah i like the title track on that one um killer jesus dying planet Mm. whole album i think from from start to finish is really good um another one that i got on here is um one that seems to have some division in this group and that's uh 
Scorpions Rock Believer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's a bad album. Uh, I think we were talking a little bit before we started recording. I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's as good as those classic Scorpions yeah. albums, the Lily Roth stuff from the 70s or the, the other ones from, you know, Blackout or Animal Magnetism or, you know, any yeah. of those albums. But I think it's all right. It's got it's it's got its moments. I think it's got some, you know, there's some blazing guitar solos on there and whatnot. Um, next one, uh, Saxon Carpe Diem, another one that I think is um, fairly solid. Um, I don't think Saxon has really released too many bad albums in no. their career, and they've got oh, geez, I don't think anyone can really count how many um studio albums they got. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't think it's quite as strong as some of their more recent studio albums, but I still think it's um, it's pretty good. Um, Pilgrimage is a good song, it's kind of I think you were saying before, it kind of reminds you of like Crusader or even mm-hmm. like uh, like Broken Heroes, a song like that. Um, Damn Busters is a good song. Um, Age of Steam is also good. And the title track is also pretty good. Um, Venom Inc. There's Only Black. Um, that's another one that I thought was really good. I know it's the second album they've done as Venom Inc. Mm-hmm. I think it's actually a little bit better than the first album they did. And I thought that one was uh, was pretty good, too. Um, so my favorite songs on there, the opening How Many Can Die um, title track is good. Uh, probably my favorite one on there is Burn Liar Burn. Love that song. Uh, I saw them live. I haven't seen them on this tour, but I saw them when they first got together as Venom Inc. Mm-hmm. And it was with uh, Mantis, Abaddon, and uh, Demolition Man. Mm-hmm. And man, they fucking killed it. I had a friend of mine who went to see... Um, cauldron they were playing the same night uh we saw venom inc it was in hamden connecticut my friend saw cauldron and i forget what other bands like up in hartford at the webster yeah. and i think you know the show he went to they played band played like five songs and i'm like dude man you should have came to fucking venom inc like they were way <laughs> better and i still to this i mean you know to this day whatever five or six years later i still make fun of them for it but um mm-hmm. it's all good uh, one that I forgot to note on here, I in my notes before, but it was brought up before, and I was listening to it early today. The uh, the new Megadeth, Sick the Dying, mm-hmm. and the Dead. Um, yeah. I think that's another uh, another solid album. Megadeth is one of those bands I kind of, you know, when when I first started getting into metal, that was obviously you know one of the, the top bands that I was listening to, and then when they did Cryptic Writings and somewhat after that, I kind of jumped off that train and mm-hmm. maybe only in the last few years, I've kind of gone back and listened to some of those other ones that they've done. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh wow. They've actually kind of like gotten good again. Uh, and I think this, this latest one is no exception. Um, I like the title track, sick, the dying and the dead. Um, Mission to Mars is kind of a, that's a, a unique one. It seems to go in many different, it, 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 it's almost kind of commercial sounding. And then it gets mm-hmm. like really heavy and thrashy in spots. Um, Soldier On is a, a good one on there, and um, Night Stalker is the one that has uh, Ice-T with the guest vocal. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that one as well. And We'll Be Back, that's, a, I mean, yeah, I don't think there's a, there's a bad song on that one. So um, I think that was seven right there that I went through. So now going to my top three. Excellent. Um, one that I think has kind of fallen under the radar a little bit, and I don't think it's been mentioned tonight, but um, the new uh, album that came out from Tony Martin thorns wow no you know yeah. i didn't get to listen to it much this year either either yeah. no nope. I, I thought it, it was a really good album um the opening track as the world burns is freaking phenomenal um mm. uh, black widow angel another great one on there um i think it's somewhat you know reminiscent of that era of black sabbath although it's it's heavier in parts but then the album like some of the later tracks it takes a little bit of a left turn there's um the uh, second to last song on there, it's kind of like this acoustic blues kind of um, type of song. Um, a great musician, so great playing. Uh, and I think uh, Tony Martin, like his vocals, I think sound just as good as they did back in the 80s. Uh, mm-hmm. But great record. Uh, number two for me, uh, Let There Be Witchery for Midnight. Uh, I just saw these guys open at the... Uh, the Merciful Fate and the Creator Show. I saw them in yep. Boston. Um, but I got there. They were already playing by the time I got there, but I, I caught most of their set. I'm like, wow, these guys are good. And I got that, the, um, you know, I kind of listened to the the new album that they just put out. And it's just, you know, they're, 
it, you know, it's, I think like my man was saying before, you know, it's kind of, it's like venom, but I also think they kind of sound like motorhead a little bit. It's like, you know, venom. Kind of like, mm-hmm. like somewhere in between there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, a friend, uh, a friend I mean, of mine actually quoted when someone was asking about Midnight, if Venom and Motorhead had a baby. Uh, yeah. Something like that. I said that on the last episode that we yeah. when we did the mid-year one, I said that exactly. You that. said, Ralph said, okay, yeah. so Ralph. But Tony, Tony said something similar too when he was yeah. talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. Scow or somebody. Yeah. Yeah. They whoop ass. Yeah, but they were, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely getting into them a lot now, but I but okay. I like the, the new album that they just put out. I mean, song titles like, you know, you know, Sex Witchery, Let There Be Sodomy, mm-hmm. uh, Devil Virgin, Telepathic Nightmares. I mean, it's just, and it's a short record too. It's only like maybe a little over half an hour. So it's just yeah. like, it's just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. There you go. Um, my number one album for 2022 has to be um, Synchro Anarchy from Voivod. Wow. Um, I think like some of the guys were saying, was, you know, it it definitely has a lot of uh, different elements from what you've heard from previous Voivod, yeah, but it, yeah. it kind of, it stands on its own, I think. Um, and it's probably my favorite of, I would say of the the newer Voivod, the, at least the ones with uh, Chewy on yeah. guitar, I think it's their best one. Definitely. Um, and I don't think they, I don't, you know, they're one of those bands. I don't think they've ever done anything that's really bad. No. There, you know, there's some albums I like better than others, but I mean, man, this one, it's just, it's, it's weird too. It's just, it's very quirky in a lot of spots, but you know, still very heavy, still unique. Um, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I think my, you know, the, the lyric where he's, I think his quest for nothing. He says like, I am an ant, but he's saying it with like such conviction. It's, it's just so weird, but. I, I love it. So um, that's my number one pick. Couple of couple votes, votes, votes for Voivod tonight and midnight. Yeah. Getting a lot of votes here tonight, yeah. too. Hey yeah. Ralph, we got you out of bed. Yep. And I guess it's uh do you want to go now or do you want to go last? Uh, I'll I'll go now, I guess. All right. So we got Ralph and me and then Sasquatch, and then we're wrapping this baby up. Yep. All right, 2022, fucking awesome year for music and metal. Um, like John was saying earlier, there was so much coming out that like it, it, you need like five years <laughs> to absorb this year's worth of music, you know? It's too much way I mean, out of so, line. So many late releases, too, that I didn't even get, but I had listened to on YouTube, like uh, the new Destroyer 666 and yeah. uh, the Candle Mass I didn't get yet and the yeah. Dark Throne. And aggression. I, I when are we gonna get that at Rock Fantasy? Yeah, when are we gonna get that? So that's what you didn't send me any. Yeah, Daddy. Well, we'll talk after the show. Okay, good. We're, I know we talked about it a few weeks ago. He was gonna send me some. Yeah, can't but wait yeah, to get that. Nah, I didn't even get to listen to it, so it's not on my list, man. I still haven't even got it myself. Oh, you still all right, so I don't feel so bad then. So but the guy in North Carolina has it. So how'd that work out? <laughs> well, I felt I, I I got like fifteen, like usual. I I didn't know how many we were doing. Nah, That's you a, can breathe. Don't breathe. Yeah, I'm just, doing thirty, so you missed my top six <laughs> thirty to sixteen. But we'll, I'll breeze through it real quick when I'm. Yeah, I'll breeze through a lot of these ones. A lot of people already talked about them, but uh, yeah, yeah. Dark Funeral. Yeah. New Origin, super blistering fast shit. Yeah. Misery Index. Satan. Yeah. It's New Spirits of Fire, Chris Cafferty, Steve DiGiorgio. Yes, yes. I, I did I ended up getting this from Rock Fantasy after Tony mentioned it the last time. Keeler got that. I did get it on vinyl too, because that new the album. Holy Diver by, the Holy D- Diver remaster. Yeah, yeah. Um no one's mentioned this great release. Yeah, I never uh, heard of that before. I don't know what that's that crap <laughs> I never heard of him. <laughs> a lot of classic old stuff all put together on double that must CD. be really 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 new <laughs> <laughs> great yeah. covers album by deceased okay. uh, yeah. yeah. cool. thrash times at ridgemont high that's uh, cool bloodbath yeah new omar and omar sounds like so much of their other albums but still pretty cool yeah i haven't listened to this too much but the new behemoth the new behemoths, um, yeah. Now I'm getting down to like the top ten. Now you're all right. So uh, yeah, the Belfagor almost made my top five. The 
the, the first the title track song on this might be my favorite song of the year. Really fucking the solid. Dallas. New exhumed. Yep. Yeah. Of course, we got to have immolation in there. Yep. Watain. Yeah. Never heard of them. That I think. Now I'm down to my top five. The top five. Drum roll, man. <laughs> right. The the new autopsy. Mm -hmm. So such a great album. Sounds just like you'd want them to sound at this point in their career. New Crisian, real yes. solid album. Yeah. Love the production on this. Everything is so clear. The drums are just so amazing on this album. New Goat Whore. Yeah. This came out like a couple of weeks after I seen with uh, Incantation and Goat Whore. Which I playing missed. In the city. And uh, I ended up hanging out with Ed out in the, out in the street there for a little bit mm -hmm. during that show. I don't know if you remember that, Ed, but yep, wrong yep. Um, now down to my, my two, <laughs> uh, the new midnight is probably the one I listened to the most this wow. year. I got to see him earlier in the year, opening up for mayhem. And then I had tickets to see him with merciful fate. But when we got there with all the traffic, we, we talked about that. It was a uh, nightmare getting into Brooklyn that night. So I ended up missing uh, was crazy. Core creator and merciful fate. But then uh, also the new Voivod is uh, there to my one and two. I don't know which one I exactly like the most, but um, okay. I, I agree that since Chewie's been in the band, this is my favorite album with them. I love the last album, The Wake, but uh, something about this album, the production and the flow to it is, is so oh, cool man. and weird and exactly what you'd want Voivod to sound like now. I wish he, he sang, I wish Snake uh, would uh, sing with a little bit more aggression at times. That would mm -hmm. be the only thing that would make it a little bit better, but it's still such an amazing album. Such a unique band. They're one of the most original bands of all time. And yeah, that's it. Excellent, man. Thanks. So I guess it's back to me because Sasquatch says he's going last. So I'm going to give you mine. I want to try to do this better than before because I fucked it up earlier. Uh, I want to give some, not everybody's listening to the beginning. 30 was Abbott with Dread Reaver. 29, Venom. There's only black. 28 was Bloodbath, Survivor of the Sickest. 27, Decapitated with Cancer Culture. What a tongue twister that one is. 26 is Satan with Earth Infernal. 25 is Black Anvil with Regenesis. 24th is Behemoth with the Ops Contra Natvram. Usually Behemoth's way higher on my list. I don't know. I'm not getting into this album as much. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, 23 is Hammerfall with Hammer of the Dawn. 22 is Geezer, Stone Blues Machine, local stoner doom metal band from Kingston, New York. The 15th studio album from Voivod, Synchro Anarchy, not as high as other people's lists, but I love that record. It's tough. This top, it, like you said, a lot of this is day by day. Uh, number 20, Ozzy Osbourne with Patient Number Nine. Dig that album a lot. Didn't give it a chance at first. My friends were making me listen to it. It's like, what the fuck are you got a problem with this record for? It's a pretty good track. And I agree. 19th, I'm going with Lamb of God, Omens. 18. The Three Brothers from Brazil, Christian, Christian with Morton Solis. 17 should be higher on my list. Destroyer 666 with Guillotine, would never surrender. I love Guillotine, Savage Rights, whole album. And at 16th, I'm with Meshuga with Immutable. Now, I'm brushing into the top 15. Everybody's got a drum roll. They can't wait to hear my top 15. It's, I make it run out of this room for some of them. Swedish Viking Metal Kings, Amata Marth, with the Great Heathen Army. Didn't like this album at all, so I saw them live. And some of the tracks, I really came around. I loved the title track. Odin owns you all. We've talked a lot about Biff and Saxon, an album that I kind of overlooked on my list. But Biff does a guest on here. He does the song Saxons and Vikings, where him and the lead vocalist of Amata Marth go back and forth. Like that a lot. <laughs> Number 14, at Balfagor with the Devils. Number 13, I'm probably getting run out of room. I like the new record by Korn. I don't give a shit if you do or not. But I, I, it's, on my top, it's on my top 20, my wife's favorite band. We listen to it a lot in the house. Number 12 is Megadeth, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. And we'll be back. Of course, the title track. I listen to that album a lot. 11 is a local band that we've had a couple times at our venue here in Middletown. There's Sun Voyager, uh, Fuzzy, Psychedelic, 
doomy uh, stoner metal the hell we ride god is dead too off that tr off the number 10 goat whore angels hung from the arches of heaven another great religious record we can listen to on <laughs> sunday mornings <laughs> Very religious. <laughs> and sammy uh from goat whore actually was saying that i asked what's what what's this new album about about satan no <laughs> <laughs> and it's about being heavy and uh, i'm like yeah it is and number that was number 10 number nine septic flesh from greece with mm. modern primitive that's an album i've been listening to a ton this year could even be higher on the list number eight i'm going with creator with hate uber alice become immortal the title track crush the tyrant strongest of the strong killer jesus just a solid record very polished i know some creator fans from back in the day do not like this direction they've gone in but it seems like a lot of people still do a lot of these could be flipped into a thing here and tripled around and i don't it was hard to have like a number just one album or number but all these kind of fell into place number seven is with tain agony and exe of attain i think that that album could be number one on my list some days but it's it's number seven tonight i love we remain which features as guest vocals from farida of course from devil's blood fame that she's on this album and i just i agree with what john said about with tain before they're just a solid live performance. Everything about Watane is keep getting better and better, I believe. Number six, Amorphous with Halo. I love Amorphous. I love the modern style of Amorphous. Maybe not exactly death metal, but melodic European style, a Swedish and uh, on Dark Waters, a new land. Number five, no one's mentioned this tonight. I'm a little surprised with Tony Dio not liking the sound, but he told me he did not for one reason or another. Queensryche with Digital Noise Alliance. I love this record. It's good, I think. Got to see them open up for Priest this year, and I think they gave Priest a run for their money. With it. It's just, they only played a couple new songs, but this is a strong 80s. Queensryche is back. They got rid of Jeff Tate. He didn't want to do metal anymore. A lot of people don't listen to him, but Todd totally filled in everything that was needed with Queensryche. Yeah, I think Number Todd does great. Yeah. I mean, great I, I know I don't know the albums that well, but everything I've heard, he sounds great. Sounds great, yes. It's catchy, gets in your head some of the songs. I think it's really solid, and uh, I don't want Jeff to come back. No. No. No, right. no. Let, him, let him do his solo stuff. Have fun. <laughs> all right, number four. I'm going to get run out of the room here. No one's mentioned this band. Oh, they all hate them but me. I like the new Ghost album. I don't give a shit if you do or not. <laughs> No, that was my, it was my first show after two okay, and a half I years gotta go. of I'm being locked out. <laughs> we're going to talk to John McAtee about, uh, we're going to talk pro wrestling with John McAtee after some hangout guy. But uh, it was the first show I saw no, again okay. after being hidden away for two and a half years, taking care of my wife. I went to an arena show. It was Ghost, Macedon, and Spirit Box. And I'm like, I'm going to the goddamn show. I went in. I didn't know whether I was supposed to still wear a mask. But I could touch someone or go up to someone, and that got me back into going to shows. But I do like the new Ghost record. I love the song Hunter's Moon. I don't know. I listen to it a lot. So Sabaton is number three, another band that everyone hates in this room but me, probably. <laughs> and I love Sabaton. It's so, and I'm not using props. So I was getting mixed up, but it's a war to end all wars. It's 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 the whole. It's all about World War One, and it does, and it's done quite well, I believe. Number two, we're going to go back to me being not a poser. Or John McAtee, would, I, uh, we I, had a friend, a poser friend. Uh, I am back with number two <laughs> with Immolation, The Acts of God. I This album didn't grow on me as much as the last couple, but after seeing Immolation on tour, performing some of the songs, sometimes it takes me going to a show and hearing the artists performing the new stuff live for it to really gain traction in my brain. And mm -hmm. that album is just amazing. And number one, I can't be called a poser for this. I've never given this band a number one album ever. I listen to this album all the time, sometimes at least once a week, probably more. It's Dark Funeral with We Are the Apocalypse. Another, if that tour That's to me, surprise. we're going to... We're going to come back next week and we're going to talk about tours and bands we saw in 2022. This tour for me with Cannibal Corpse, Immolation, Dark Funeral, and Black Anvil was just killer. I saw it up in Albany, New York. 
And I tried to go down to Tampa and actually close out the tour and hang out with some friends in Florida, which I did not do. But uh, I love the Dark Funeral record and a couple of the songs like Nightfall, which opens up is great. I was shocked they weren't doing that live. I like the ballad. If there is such a thing as a black metal ballad, When I'm Gone, it's just fucking epic and a beast to praise. Love the whole record. I agree with John. I, I wasn't real huge on Dark Funeral. Always respected them. The last two albums, or even the last album before this with the new vocals, Helmadier, if I'm pro- pronouncing that correctly, that is just great stuff. So uh, hats off to Dark Funeral. I'm probably going to hell because I just picked them as number one. But. <laughs> And uh, that's my little list. So, yeah, I'm a poser. I've got some poser bands in there, but uh, hey, it's what my hey, ears like listen to. <laughs> Everybody you like likes cor- you like the new corn better than a new Crisian. No, I don't. It's yeah, just you put it up higher on your list. They're all lumped uh, from like 10 back. It's all just <laughs> got, all that's plumped together. I did say that. Don't Ralph is going to never come to my story. A birthday party canceled everything now. <laughs> 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 yep so anyhow sasquatch That's after cool. that we're gonna roll you on out of here sasquatch. all right all right all right all right Stephen you've got Keeler, the, Mr. You've got the, wait a minute you got the scorpions as number one too <laughs> <laughs> no but uh okay I, i'll talk about it shortly but uh <laughs> oh, no. first first of all like 2022 like everybody says what a good year for metal uh, the amount of albums that came out that kicked ass, it's unbelievable. And, mm-hmm. you know, as a bunch of guys was trying to to get metal back on the map and back to be what it used to be, it's nice to see, like, ah, up here in Canada, like in Vancouver, I can't even get tickets for shows. Wow. It gets sold out within minutes. Any Any metal show. Really? Like Alex from Immolation had to get me in the alley behind the rickshaw, John. <laughs> uh, with the rats and the fucking homeless people to try to get me through the door to get to that show, but he did. So thank you, Alex. But and, yeah, and it, you were able to get some crack while you're there too. But yeah, it's it's uh, shows are sold out. That the metal, more and more metal kids coming out, and it's mm-hmm. nice to see the scene uh, starting to show glimpse of what it used to be. Um, I prefer like seeing my kids listening to Ghost and like, you know, even though they play it all the time and I'm like, eh, you know, a little, <laughs> like I'm not like Steven, I'm not as emotional, but some of the, uh, some of the, uh, <laughs> I didn't cry over it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I prefer for them like to like follow some guy dressed like a Pope or Cardinal singing like uh, yeah. innuendo satanic stuff. Yes. Like <laughs> at least they're on the right track to where they're going to be eventually. But yeah, yeah. and same no, for a Scorpion. good gateway band. It's a stepping yeah. stone for the yeah. evilness of it's like the new kiss. Cantation. It's like the new kiss for us. We went from kiss to venom, right? So it's kind of like the same. Yeah, thing. yeah, of course. Um, and Scorpions, I prefer having people like the fan Scorpions and loving the album than you know, because it's freaking Scorpions and they deserve to have some people liking their stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I, I, I was listening to that new Metallica track and uh, I, I keep saying that I, I don't think you can write proper metal if you have $300 million in the banks and, bank and, and, and playing golf with like the CEO of Apple. like and Kardashians uh, or whatever. Right? <laughs> how can you have the anger necessary? See, like Dave from Megadeth will always write good shit because he's still angry from like what happened yeah. 30 years ago he done, Still for, pissed. yeah yeah so but yeah um i i i got my top 10 i i actually like uh discussed the list with a bunch of metal heads uh up here in uh in vancouver the guys from infernal majesties and guys from all like the bands in the area i own friends i own friended friend on facebook because i didn't like their selection so we really like spend like a lot of hours discussing the st- this top 10 list <laughs> and they are in order and that's our that's like the vancouver area metal head list of the year all right okay so, you guys are ready yeah we're ready mm-hmm. so number 10 um i'm always looking for a band that's going to give me the vibe that black sabbath heaven and hell and mob rules uh a lot of band copy Sabbath, like they try to do like volume four, Sabbath, nobody will ever be able to, but a lot of people trying to rep- reproduce that sound, but not as much as the Evan and L and uh, 
and mob rules. And like number 10, we decided it was candle mass, sweet evil sun, because not only they deliver quality metal, but the sound, the vocal, uh, the writing, the solos, everything reminds of that era. Uh, and it's it's not easy to reproduce. So candle mass at number 10. Number nine, a lot of people mentioned those guys, Blood Bat, Survival of the Sickest. Um, mm -hmm. Such an amazing death metal album. Like these guys are, are you know, it, it's almost like, you know, John mentioned like Autopsy can like get that 1989 vibe. These guys, they get kind of like a modern vibe always of the same, like it's like old school, new school, but at the same time. Um, the riff, the production, the voice, the vocal, um, amazing. Um, number eight, a band that nobody here mentioned, and I almost like reach out to Tony Dio like 10 times about that band, but it's the band Sword from Montreal. Um, Sword, it's their first album in like 25 years or 30 years. It's the Sword 3. Um, it's same vibe as Candle Mass. They got that like that riffing, uh, high pitched screaming, squeal vocals. Uh, good friend of ours and Voivod, like the all three bands used to practice in the same jam space back in Montreal in the eighties. Mm -hmm. um, you gotta check it out. It, it's really well done. Um, you gotta even check it out. I haven't yeah. heard it yet. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's uh it's high quality, high quality like heavy metal. It's really well done. These guys are great. Number seven, another band that wasn't uh, mentioned here. Uh, maybe like my punk side comes out a little bit, but it's uh, Ratos di Porajo with mm. the album Necropolitica. Um, uh, these guys always have that. Uh, they remind me of guys who have like no money in the bank and like they just write straight from the heart. I don't know what's happening out there in Brazil and their living condition, but um, it's got that same vibe that what we used to listen to, like a little bit of like DR high, a little bit of uh, it mixed with like some Slayer riff and all kind of different things. So I really like that band. Uh, number six, Destroyer 666, Never Surrender. Um it, it's it's not only like the songwriting, it's the sound and the the reverb in the guitars and the it's like one of guy in the band is constantly doing solos to the entire song. It reminds me of Rocky George when he was with Suicidal. The show started and Rocky George just starts soloing the entire show, and not even playing <laughs> the riff once. They didn't care what's going on behind him. But these guys have that that you that great use of reverb in their sound, and you know right away that it's Destroyer Six Six Six. You know the way that they're the way they're tuned pretty high for like a, a death metal band or black metal band, but it's that sound and they do it really well. Uh, number five, Immolation, Act of God. Uh, nice. Similar to what everybody said, like uh, and, and John was right. Um, it's like they're becoming more their own entity. And I saw them live twice this year and I was able to even like listen to them play live the new songs. And they, they're they really, um, I don't know, it's like all the planets align and everything that they write, the riff, the, the vocals, Ross vocal and everything is just, it sounds, it's got a great... Um, it's got a great progression of the music. Uh, so I can't wait to hear what they're going to do next. But Act of, Acts of God, uh, one of the one of the best album of the year. Mm -hmm. Number four, everybody mentioned that band. I'll mention it again. is Saxon, uh, Carpe Diem. Um, I don't even know how they can like deliver such great quality metal after after album after album. Um, the guitar production is just freaking ridiculous like those i i don't know what they did for the guitar production but it just crushes right through like it's all mids crushing through your speaker and like you can listen to those songs and um i don't know i had so much respect for saxon uh number three it's the actually i i it's because of you guys yeah. because it, at the mid-year show we you guys brought midnight um and we played with Midnight before, and I and I and I listened to them, and I liked it. But I went and got the Let There Be Witchery, 
Um, you know, if you say mix Venom, baby of Venom and, and, and Motorhead, I mean, I'm in. Like, you know, I'll go and fucking get the album now and mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to like it. But they, they, I don't even, and it's quite uh, amazing that they got the uh, exposure to open for Mer merciful fate mm -hmm. and creator uh what a great gig for them um, yes but they they got that sound and and it's it's just uh that's another band that i can't wait to see what they're gonna do next because it keeps the they start to get uh on in their own style and People are craving for that. Like Motorhead's not around anymore. Venom doesn't sound the way Venom used to sound. Too. So there's a market for that. I can't wait to see what they're going to do next. Mm. Number two, nobody mentioned that band. And I'm wow. like, I don't understand because these guys are insane. Is it Witchery? So the band Witchery, they have a new album called Nightside. And they're from Sweden, I think. I think they're from Sweden. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't even know they had a new album. <laughs> dude it's like they have a song called uh uh a forest of burning coffin wow and it's i guarantee you these guys probably are like i don't know why people don't ever talk about them but this album is definitely one of the best album of the year like every song on there crushes and it's there's not one song and and they have two crazy instrumental that makes no sense at all like I don't even understand what's going on, but it's you just keep listening and listening and listening to it. Um, so Witchery Nightside, still black and thrash, still doing the same style. Yeah, but like um, almost, uh, I don't want to say I don't want to use the word commercial, but maybe more. Um, it's more fun? catchy. It's catchier. It's catchier. Still. They they have some songs that will have. Uh, Similar to, you know, like um, back when we used to listen to Metallica, Ride and Lightning, we just wanted them, to, we just wanted to listen to Fight Fire with Fire because it was mm -hmm. the fastest song. But then you catch yourself listening from the bell toll and be like, oh, that's heavy, right? So yeah. they got that same, like they're able to play a song at a slower pace and still keep that heaviness. Uh, oh. So witchery. And... Number one. So this year was a tough year for me personally. Uh, I broke my arm. I broke my wrist. I mm -hmm. had surgery. I lost my voice. We missed some shows. But, you know, maybe I shouldn't play hockey when I'm like 56 years old. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, so I, I end up like having to like, drive around uh, up in Canada uh, quite a few like snowstorms this year. Okay. Uh, there's been some crazy snowstorm out in, in British Columbia. Uh, I mean, like Eastern, like Buffalo, New York size snowstorm. Wow. This place is not equipped for it. So I got that album that same day and I, I, I put it on my phone so I can like uh, listen in my truck and um i don't know if it's the snow falling and the blizzard me not able to able to see where i'm going and everything but the new dark throne like astral forest fortress um wow. um you know there was like three three of us in the truck and like we just started to listen to this album and since we got it we never stopped listening to it and then we got other people to start listening to it and they're listening to it um, I know Dark Throne for years. Um, I listened to all their albums and none of their album ever did what this one did to me. And I it's it's the production seems better. Um I mean, these guys are crazy guys. Have you ever have you ever seen them like talk on like social media and mm -hmm. stuff? They're just like insane, but but they, it's um it's really stood out, very catchy. Lots of long songs with like acoustic guitar and weird simple riff that will like hook you like you've never been hooked before. Um, so that's it. That's the top 10 uh, for the uh, Vancouver regions for uh, everybody up here. Uh, we debated. We unfriended some people. It uh, does. Yeah. But uh, it is what it is. <laughs> it's all about metal in the end, right? So yes. that's it. That new Dark Throne is killer, but that's got to be the worst album cover. Album I cover. I hate that <laughs> album cover, man. What the fuck? Wow. But it, it's, it's, you know, like, for it, I agree. It's just some guy standing in the fucking snow. That's Finn Ray. Right. Like, it's pretty <laughs> cheesy. He's skating. At least you should be skating towards Satan out or something. Like yeah. But you know uh -huh. what? If they get us to talk about it, 
they did what an album cover is supposed to do. I will agree. I thought that that album cover was, I was like, oh man, this ain't gonna be good. But I really, I like this Dark Throne record better than the last one, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, that it is what it is. Oh, I guess that's a wrap on this episode. A little long, about two hours, but I think we all had fun discussing what we liked and a few of us what we didn't like from last year. Hopefully we can all join back together next Wednesday and we'll talk about our favorite concerts from last year. If that's a cool subject for everyone. And of course, some people can talk about ones they played, other ones what we've saw. And I started going back to live shows, indoor shows in September. So it was nice. And I went to a million shows since. And it's really good to be back. And unfortunately, when John came through, I was I had my COVID visit. <laughs> and if you want to know how I caught COVID now, Ralph is going to say because I went to it, but I was working at the fairgrounds. They had Papa Roach in, and we all got COVID. <laughs> and we saw Papa Roach. So that, John, is that your favorite Papa band? COVID. I forgot yeah, to invite yeah, you. I forgot yeah. to invite you. Darn it. I'm really pissed about I that. I could have gave you COVID too, maybe. After, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so we saw a bunch of good shows and plenty to talk about so uh, hopefully we can all join in next week and everyone that's watching please put your favorite albums from this year down in the comments and maybe some of us will join in and put the put our list into in the comments on the uh, youtube video which will go up tomorrow and what's awesome. going on in uh, John McAtee land? Anything going on? You got a new album you're working on? Yeah, it's putting the finishing touches on the awesome. new album. Should be some news about it within the next month or two, I figure, mm -hmm. maybe three months or something. But we're, we're done, like, almost done on our end of it. Um, yeah, besides that, just been working on the next uh, Caroline Chainsaw Massacre stuff. Yes. Just we should be making a announcement pretty soon with some super cool stuff. Just trying to kind of, you know, keep things rolling with that. I mean, last year mm -hmm. we really had a blast. Everybody really enjoyed it and stuff. We want to try to keep it going. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, luckily with, uh, you know, Tony here and Ed both helping out a lot with, mm -hmm. um, you know, everything from you know like ed helped out a lot day of show but also just like a lot of behind the scenes stuff so i appreciate you guys um you know your contribution yeah. to this it's a good thing we're doing for north carolina you know something that i think we really need over here so yeah that's um besides that just um you know working on whatever you know stuff i work on you know of metal course. Mm -hmm. ed you got any shows lined up in the new york city area right now or is it quiet right now all quiet right now. Nothing. Um, I'm working on rescheduling the Possessed show from three years ago. Okay. Uh, working on that. Uh, the promoter is rewriting the tour with some new bands. And so that's probably going to be the next show that I'm involved with. Mm -hmm. Other than that, nothing else set up right now. Uh, I'm concentrating cool. on the Carolina Fest also with John. Uh, I'm be doing that. So this year, I'm not going to be doing too many shows, taking a little quieter this year. Uh, I'm just right. going to enjoy myself at shows again. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Man. Instead of stressing, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Danny, of course, we've been talking. Some people had your album in the top uh, in their top list. And uh, how do we go about buying that record if we want to go buy it right now? Since Rock Fantasy doesn't even have them yet, so yeah, I'm, it's really, I'm really bad. I'll find a way to get you some. Um, All right. But yeah, our, our our latest album's doing really great. Um, we're actually entering the studio in 10 days for recording the next one. Excellent. Um, and and we, we got some big news coming out at the end of the month. Uh, but we uh, like uh, mm -hmm. some of the guys in the band been uh, scouted by bigger bands to go uh -oh. and, and, and help out. So uh, it's going to get really busy. But we're all stoked to go to the uh, Carolina uh, Chainsaw Massacre. Cool. So gonna have some surprise for Jordan and ed and tony and just go ape shit down there so uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, yeah that'd be a lot of fun <laughs> cool cool so i guess that'll put a wrap on this episode I'd like to thank everybody that we got in the room still hansi who took off already uh, we got ovi we got miles we got tony dio we got christian we got mr ed farsley john magatee and of course count ralph is 
And uh, if you're in the area, please come out to Quinn's Pins, our newest venue in the Hudson Valley, New York, about an hour north of the city for Count Rouse's birthday bash, which will be February 11th. It's a free show. Doesn't cost you anything. We got Jotunheim from New York City. We have Slayer Tribute with Show No Mercy. We have Reaper. And yes, we have another band, but I don't have their name in front of me. And I don't want to mess it up, but uh, a thrash what, metal band. What about so. this weekend, Steve? This weekend, we do have a big show. Thank you for reminding me. If you're in the Middletown, <laughs> uh, New York area, we've got the Hudson Valley Squares, who Ralph is now an official mem member of, or Pete Pardo, See You Tranquility YouTube vlog, which a lot of our viewers are familiar with, of course. And we are doing a Hudson Valley Squares night at Quinn's Pins. We're going to have a Q&A session with Peter Pardo and Ralph and I think Chris Allo and a few of the others will be there. And we have a full show from local Judas Priest tribute band, British Steel, who are going to do, I think, three hours of Priest movie and Priest music, <laughs> rather. And, they're, and they were promising on doing most of unleashed in the east for us so which will be quite the treat along with Ooh. some added things and of course we have a lot we have uh, into the void the black sabbath tribute coming in in march and we have a bunch of shows that we're working on right now so please come out to rock fantasy if you're in the area come out to our little venue it's nice i'm actually booking bands again for the first time since i was 29 years old and i'm 62 so i'm going trying to grab it by the bull with both horns and cool. maybe one day we'll get incantation to play we'll to no, we them. haven't played middletown for a while we'll have to steal them off a tour i mean we proved we could do it because we had morpheus descends and all out war in there recently we had about three four hundred people there we had a cool. big mosh pit and it all everything was smooth so knock on wood but uh yeah it'd be it'd be great to have you guys come through john yeah you get us an aggression there we go uh, there's a double bill we're setting up now and then we have to have another shun ban maybe we'll have suffocation to come up and play with us <laughs> yeah that'd be great hell yeah <laughs> we still have to do the shun tour where it's incantation immolation and suffocation <laughs> the shun <laughs> yes <laughs> all That's right awesome. guys so uh Thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll see you next time on the Rock Fantasy YouTube channel. Boom.